Hey there, Knicks fans. How you doing? It's your boy, Jonathan Macri, with you for another episode of the Knicks Film School podcast with my, uh, let's just say it, my better half. He's just, I mean, you've carried me for how many months now, Jeremy? It's been a few. Are you yeah. shoulder? Are your shoulders? How are your shoulders? Do, do, do you tan? Are your shoulders sunburnt? So does it make it even harder to carry me? Do you? You've seen this face and this hair, and you think that I tan? <laughs> Maybe like that's your, tan your go for you. to. I don't know. <laughs> no, like I just I'm either male or I'm a lobster. There's really no in between. Uh, like a lot of freckles, you know, my freckles will get more significant when more I'm freckly? spending time with. Yeah, you know exactly. Uh, but no, no, I um. This is really where it gets. So okay, well that's good. So your your shoulders aren't hurting too much. Maybe your back is is feeling it because I, I I feel like I need to lose a few pounds. Um, you look great though. Uh, that's very nice of you. Um, how are you, sir? Before we get started today, I'm good. You know, um, doing great. Had last week off. Actually, starting a new job tomorrow. So Congratulations. People, thank you. As people listen to me today, um, so. Life's good. Yeah. How are you, John? You 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 seem to be busy with things. So how, how's life? <laughs> I am busy with things. I'm not going to I'm still not going to reveal what I've been so busy with, but I will. I will uh, say soon enough. But yes, things things have been busy. Um, and um, it's it's fitting because this is I'm about to embark kind of on something. Um, and it's fitting that the basketball season is now finally, 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 finally. I think I could say this. It's over. We could put a cap on all of the events from 2021 in terms of contracts, free agency, potential trade, draft, summer league, all that shit. Are we are we now officially ready to close the book on all that? Oh, John, you sweet summer child. No, no, we're not done. We still have Julius Randle's contract to be officially signed. And then before you know it, uh, we have some, you know, formalities of guaranteeing the club options for third year Obi top and Emmanuel quickly fourth year RJ Barrett, um, you know, Ooh. Mitchell Robinson contract situation. So at least from, from the past. Yeah. Like once, once Julius Randall dots the I's and cross the T's we're out, baby, we're, we're good for a little <laughs> bit, but until then uh, we still got one, one more thing to go. That gleam in your eye. So but you just mentioned before, so we're going to, to the today's episodes. We're basically going to um, despite Jeremy's, uh, protests. We're we're gonna kind of put a cap on some of the 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 last news that has trickled across the uh, the news desk, as it were, um, and 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 finalize everything in the same vein that we've been doing for several weeks now with the cap or no cap. One last one for for old time's sake. Before we get there, I have an apology to make, and I think the apology is direct. I think it has to be direct. Andrew, can you can you turn your mic on? Yeah, I'm here. I think the apology has to be directed at both of you. Go ahead. Yeah, we're ready for it. So apparently in my haste, in my haste, because I was on vacation, I was looking to get back to vacation clearly and have a Mai Tai or something. Last week when we were discussing RJ, I was not prepared to discuss that topic. By the way. RJ Barrett's next contract. I offhandedly perhaps may have said something along the lines of, I think maybe he'll get something similar to the Lonzo extension. You both heard this. Oh, I remember. Yes. I was confused. What? I just apparently so did everybody else. And they were waiting a week until we opened green room to let you know that they heard it. I was, (laughs) I was, uh, I have to say quite rudely confronted with (laughs) that take on Saturday's green room. Um, And I'll just come out and say it was, it was not a good take. It was a, it was a bad take. It was um, a take that came from a place of like, all right, He's not like a day one max where there's no conversation. So what's the next tier down? And the first player that came to mind was, oh, not Lonzo. Okay, Lonzo's a nice guy. And the, the truth of the matter is there exists a uh, netherworld between Lonzo Ball and uh, your your day one automatic maxes. And so as I discussed, for anybody who heard the, the green room on, on Saturday or the podcast that came after it, um, I apologize for repeating myself. If I had to go back on what I said, which I'm going to do now, um, cause I'm a man. I could admit when I'm wrong, um, is first of all, I misspoken or misthought in thinking, okay, four years, five years, he's getting five years, right? Unless he wants four years, um, which hopefully he doesn't, hopefully he wants all five years. Um, so at the rate that I propose, that would have been five for one Oh five. That's also wrong. Five for one twenty five. That's what he's probably going to get. 
I think both of you said that, and I just want to be the bigger man here and say that you were right and I was wrong. Jeremy, you first. I did, um, but I actually have been thinking it over, and I think 25 isn't going to be a max, and I think he's actually going to get a max contract. You really do? Okay. Again, I mean, um, and this was pointed out as well in comments that I happen to see, it's basically, you know, like how many top five players who just have shown um, or even not shown the ability to, to be good enough have top five picks top. Yes. Top yes. five picks in top each five. year's, you know, like there are plenty of guys who have been able to secure that bag without even being very good. Andrew Wiggins is one prime example. I mean, it's the sort of thing put up here numbers. where he did, he did put up numbers, right. put up numbers. Um, I guess it's the sort of thing with RJ where it's like, okay, the only reason you take a discount is because he saw Randall taking a discount and they want to worry about that. But I, I think there, there's kind of two prevailing thoughts here. The first is like, yes, he could take that discount and try to show a buy-in. Uh, but the second is it doesn't really matter. He doesn't have to take a discount because with the whole idea of Randall and the Knicks being hard capped and why Randall took the extension now to help um, mitigate the issues that might come about the year after the Knicks won't be hard capped in 2023. There, there's pretty much That's correct. no shot that they would be because they'd be well above the luxury tax apron, assuming all goes well. So if that's the case, it's like, what is RJ saving money on? Why would he not take a max contract oh, or see. why so would he offer? You're so, saying the incentive to help the team out wouldn't be there. Right. Whereas for Randall, okay. it was because his cap hold was much higher than what he's going to be paid next year, most likely. So okay, that's the thing with RJ, where the, the only thing the Knicks really have to worry about at that point is luxury tax dollars that Dolan would be paying. And I don't think RJ nope. Barrett's going to be like, hey, I want to save James Dolan some money um, because that's the right thing to do. It, you know, yeah. it's his rookie deal or excuse me, his, his first extension. He'll get paid. Knicks, I don't think we'll have a problem paying it. Um, so I'll even walk back what I'm saying. I think 23 to 25 is too little. I'll bump it up to the max. And I feel pretty good about saying that. How much is that max? I think it's around 30, but that could change. Well, it's 20. Um, it's 25 percent of the cap, right? It is, but the sal. So this is another thing. Um, the salary cap is even more. It's projected to be even more than we thought next year. Um, so is it supposed to be one one nineteen, right. or am I? Is that for it? It is, but it was supposed to be a little over one fifteen. So oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So that means that the year after is probably going to increase more, which means yeah. if it's like if the original one was one fifteen, one twenty one, maybe it's one nineteen and one twenty five. So yeah, yeah. If it's you okay. know twenty five percent of of that then that's a max contract. It's, it's going to be more than 25 a year, though. That's the thing. And that's starting at 30 a year, potentially. With And we're not talking about the raises yet. Correct. Right. That's, a, it's a, that's, a, that's a large bag mm -hmm. full of money. 8% raises, yep. Uh, you know, who knows what the player option situation is going to be. If none at all, there could be all NBA incentives built in there. Unlikely bonuses, the work. So... Um, you know, wow. it could, it could work out for him. And I think it will ultimately, it also, it shows that the Knicks are committed to this player. Um, and at worst case, if the Knicks say, you know, there's this other star that we really want and RJ is unfortunately the vehicle. That's just the cost of doing business. Giving him more money helps with matching salary if you need it. But uh, I think the primary focus is just going to be RJ Barrett's in front of us. We think he's great. We want to build around him. We're going to max him. So the, can I just clarify yeah, once and for all so we don't have another ambush like we did yesterday and going forward, the official stance of the Knicks Film School podcast is that right. RJ Barrett will get a max extension, uh, not next summer, but the summer after? Or would it be this? No, it, he it signed be this next summer. summer. It starts the following year. Okay. okay. John, so, are you saying 5-125? Because that's still not a max. Right. But I, I think I know after hearing Jeremy's point, I think I'm now on the train of like, it doesn't make sense for him to take a discount. Here's why. Here's why Jeremy's yeah. right. I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> um, but he, here's why he's, he's right because of the because of the thing about it doesn't really help out the, the team um, effectively. So unless uh, I mean, it. As a trade asset, but again, you're quibbling about a few, not a few million dollars. Well, no, you're quibbling about a few million dollars. Is that going to really change his, drastically change his, his tradeability? But 
as I'm talking myself through this, if the team is going to sign him, whether it's the five for 125 or a full max, I would strongly assume they're doing so with the intention that RJ Barrett's going to be a Nick until he turns, I don't know, whatever he's going to turn 27, 20 years old. Can we, can we agree on that? Yes. yes. Okay. So at that point, it really doesn't make a difference. And here's where I'm going to qualify your question, Andrew. This presumes RJ Barrett goes out and like we all think, hope and pray that he does. Um, takes another step forward and I don't know if you want to put numbers on it, it's 20, you know, seven and, and five, I don't know what, whatever, whatever the numbers are you want a little bit more efficiency, uh, maybe a little bit more off the dribble, you know, behind the arc, all that. stuff. if he does all that, I don't think there's a way that Jeremy could be wrong actually, but there's another universe here where if he doesn't take that step forward. And then there is some question about what is he going to be moving forward, which is a world none of us want to live in. That's where things get, you know, um, dicey. Jeremy, he did it again. We're, we're going to be fielding a whole group bunch of calls. Like, why don't I you think did, he's going to make that? Leap, I John? didn't say that. Why, I don't think. That why he's do you going think to? he's so bad efficient? Why do you hate RJ? What did he ever do to you? Can, just, <laughs> For shits and giggles, uh-huh. um, RJ's better than this player, and he's he's a lot better than this player. But if I'm as a, as of six nineteen p.m. on Sunday night, Lori Markin it still doesn't have a contract, right? Correct. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, once upon a time, there were folks who wanted to put Lori Markin in in the same sentence as the great Kristaps Porzingis. How dare ye? Um, no, but my point is, there were once people who looked at this guy as like, oh, this is the next evolution of like the, the NBA's big man, right? Um, and now he's a guy. And again, RJ's better than him. He's already been he, his RJ's high is already higher than anything Markin ever showed. Um, but it's like funky things happen sometimes. I don't think it's going to happen to RJ. I think he's going to get the max. If I'm sitting here right now and predicting, I'm predicting he's going to be- get back. I just wanted to posit a scenario where that doesn't take place. What I, I will what- clip from this is that and I'll go back into the shadows after this. What I will clip from this is that Jeremy said, I think we'll get the max. John said, I think we'll get the max. And that is the official stance there you of go. the next film school podcast. That's fine. No, I can see it. Next year, free agency starts and the deadline, I think it's um, midnight, The you know, so six hours yeah. later when you can first do it. And we'll get an announcement from Woj saying that the Knicks have signed RJ Barrett to a five-year max contract. And the beauty of that as well is there's no like, will they or won't they? The, the Knicks yeah. can just be all about business. And it's the sort of thing like, what are we potentially kind of like haggling about here? A few million dollars? They would much rather pay RJ and feel like a functioning franchise that finally ends the Charlie Ward curse, uh, assuming Kevin Knox does not receive a contract extension. How dare you? I Well, who knows? Um but then that <laughs> philosophy of like, well, you never know. Uh, I highly doubt it. But I know, um, no, I know. <laughs> yeah, but it, know. but that sort of thing where you, you just get it over with. You don't have to worry about paying RJ because you paid RJ, and you can yeah. move on. And it also shows a willingness and determination to build around the player that is an emerging star. At least what we're hoping for a year from now, uh, and even so. Uh, and who knows? Maybe by that point, he'll be a top 125 player in the NBA. But um, until then, Alex Caruso rules us all. And um, we just have to live with that. Can I ask a stupid question? Um, slash play devil's advocate here. And I, I don't disagree with what you're saying because I. For all the reasons we already talked about, we don't have to go over again. DeAndre Ayton is still sitting here. And I guess if it, I guess if you want to throw Michael Porter Jr. into there, although there's an injury thing there, so. And that he seems like a weird guy. Um, I'll just, I won't, we won't have to go there, but Deandre Ayton is the starting center who, uh, whose team just went to the finals and everybody seemed to be like, Oh, well, he's getting the max now. He's still sitting there with no contract extension or has been announced, which is interesting. I, I find interesting. I don't know if you don't or, or do, but I just, I wanted to throw that out there as well. Um, I, I don't think it means anything right now because they still have until that if deadline. I- and a lot of those deals don't get made until the deadline. I mean, how many contract extensions did we see at the end of last off season? Uh, sure. Yeah. It was teams what, operate I mean, differently and who, maybe he's on fucking vacation. Right. Know. Who knows? Um, it could also be that the Suns are just trying to see how he does because they have to also pay Mikhail bridges and 
And Robert Sarver's so a money. cheap fuck. There you go. Uh, but he paid, you know, Chris Paul, even though that contract is uh, very bizarre in that the last, the fourth year is a team option, which you have to assume is going to be declined uh, because Chris Paul will be 40 years old. And it's Robert Sarver, uh, unless they trade Chris Paul somehow. But I can't think Chris Paul on a, you know, large contract of like 30 million, 40 million. What is it? It's at least 30 it's, million. It, it's, it's 30 um, a year, with the, but it's only 75 guaranteed. But in, in any case, so. um, no, that's a good, that's a good, I just, I don't know. I wanted to, I wanted to throw that out there. Uh, before we put a cap on the, uh, the Knicks moves, do we, do we want to talk about the Robert Williams extension? Do you think it's, well, let's start, let me ask you, do you think it's relevant? To Mitch. Sure. So for anybody who doesn't know, he, he signed for four for uh, 50, 54. Four, 54. So average annual um, of uh, 12.5. Something like that. 12.5. Yeah. Um, I thought it was, I thought it was a good contract for both sides, uh, I guess, kind of. Um, so, yeah, what do you think? Yeah. You know, I mean, a lot of people have been trying to talk about it in relation to Mitch and they all matter. All of these rim running yeah. bigs matter. I mean, that probably puts a floor on what Mitchell Robinson can make. And Mitchell Robinson is a better player than Robert Williams. He's, yeah. uh, you know, you could talk about what Williams has done in his per 36 numbers. And, and all, you know, the bottom line is that Mitch has started more games in his rookie year, or he started more games in his rookie year than Robert Williams has in his entire NBA career. Yes. So, it just kind of goes to show how teams put more of a premium on young athletic rim runners. Yep. And if you're the Knicks, you know, I mean, they're, they're handicapped from what they can do because the Celtics could pay Robert Williams hypothetically up to 25% max contract because was he was a first, first round, round pick. Uh, pick, but Mitch was not, he was a second round pick. So the Knicks are limited and basically it's around the same contract, but it's like maybe $3 million dollars less in total that four fifty four years, 51 million. I've talked about before, uh, you know, it might be slightly different than that number, but that's the ballpark. So basically if you're Mitchell Robinson, what you're saying is, do I want the Knicks to pay me now similar amount or am I comfortable betting on myself and waiting because Jared Allen just got $20 million a year. Yeah. So, you know, again, I think Mitch's value is still around 15. Um, it's, it could be a little higher. I know a lot of Knicks fans maybe, <laughs> Um, prefer Mitch to Jared Allen. I can totally understand why, but again, with Jared Allen, he really has not had the injury concern that no. Mitch has had. Um, I think he's just a safer player. I also think he got an absolute ridiculous deal. I don't understand why Cleveland it's, paid him five years and a hundred million dollars, but that's not the market. That's it, it Cleveland. Be. That's fucking Cleveland. That's right. the Cleveland tax. So if, if you had to wager right this second, it, does Mitchell Robinson not have his whatever it would be four for 56 or whatever the, the max he could sign for right now? Does he not have that because he doesn't want it or does he not have that because the Knicks haven't offered it? If I had to wager a, a dollar on it or, or a donut, let's wager a donut. I would wager it's because the Knicks haven't offered it. That's my gut feeling based on absolutely nothing other than like in my core. That's what I think. Yeah, I mean, it's a sh we can't really wager a donut one on the same side, but I agree with you. Uh, it's the sort of thing with with uh, the Knicks where, you know, it, before the season, I thought, or before the offseason, I should say, I thought, okay, if the Knicks plan on going in on the 2022 free agent class, not really spending much money and trying to get there, then it makes sense to have Mitch Robinson's cap hold on the books because it's really cheap. But then the Knicks decided to spend, and now Mitch's cap hold doesn't matter at all. No. So to me, it's like, well, then why didn't they make him a restricted free agent? Yes, they would have paid more this year, but maybe they extend him for five years. Like maybe they make it a five, you know, or four year contract, something that's longer at least, where they have him. And and it's like, how many teams are really going to bid a ridiculous amount well, for Mitchell Robinson? And we've talked about, or at least I've talked about how I, I, think part of what I like about this front office is they seem to be very well informed about the, what other teams want to do. And uh, obviously no one can see the future, but um, the restricted free agent market, I mean, uh, tepid is not the word uh, for what this thing was this year. Um, I mean, no one, no one didn't, no one, no one went out into those waters. The, the water, you know, they might as well be ice cold. So I would gather that the Knicks knew if they made him restricted, there was not going to be a 
whoever team you want to say that was going to come in on hour one and be like, all right, we're going to fuck up the next play with an offer sheet. Like, cause nobody, nobody was doing that stuff, you know? Um, so that goes to, 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 I guess, both of our points. Um, yeah. Um, interesting. Well, we'll see what happens. All right. You want to finish this thing off? Um, Finally, this thing will die. Like when you say put a cap on it, I'm like, like how many times have we put a cap on cap or no cap? And there's just no cap. So, but that's cap, right? Every time I've said it's cap or no cap, no more cap. It's cap. Um, All I can think of is, is Captain America throughout the entire little soliloquy. Yeah. Um, um, all right. Well, without, uh, without further ado. So uh, big things happening. But huge things happening. Yes, Gosh, there Todd he is. Gibson. I'm. So, by the way, by the way, get fucking paid, Tosh. You do. You do. You. Yep. God bless. Yeah. So uh, this will definitely be a Taj focused presentation, as you can tell. Uh, but first, let's do some house cleaning, right? Because the Knicks did some interesting things this week. Uh, the first one was they signed and traded for Evan Fournier. Uh, we had hypothesized that one of the reasons why Fournier had not been signed yet. It was because of some sort of sign and trade. I really love that the Knicks did this because of the fact that it basically just like, yes, on one hand, they did give the Celtics a traded player exception of about $17.1 million. Uh, and I feel like if the Celtics had to hang a banner recently, it would just be like <laughs> traded player exceptions because that's all they seem to do. But they yeah. even got two second round picks out of it. Well, um, they got one, really one because one, one of them is like a, a fake second, but uh, the other is Charlotte Hornets pick second round pick this year. So um, I just love how the Knicks have basically owned wait, wait, the wait, Hornets. Hold on. What? Wait, wait, the other was the what? There were two picks that the Knicks acquired. Yeah, the top fifty five right. protected Hornets pick for twenty twenty two. Um, no, there was Andrew. I'm, you can, well, check on, on the drafts, but my I, I thought, and I could be wrong here, is that one of them was like a fake second and yes. one's a real second, but the real second is this year, not. Oh, see, so, yeah, so we, but we I, have I could be incorrect. I, uh, so the reporting that day was that the Hornets pick was a top 55 for t- fake second okay. for 2022. And the other pick is super, super complicated. And it's essentially. Unless either the Thunder or the Wizards are much better than we expect two years from now, it's going to be the better of Miami's or Dallas's 2023 second round pick. When I say the better, I mean right. the better for the Knicks. So if that, if that's that my understanding, now, actually, yeah. Now I think so, so. Yeah, but listen, it's could it be the 45th pick? Could it be the 47th pick? Could it be the 48th pick? Clearly, the Knicks were okay just getting whatever they could get which is interesting to me that they were willing to give um, Boston this, this trade exception. I'm fine with it. I think some people were a little like, why would you want to help Boston out that much? It's like, it's a trade exception. Right. It's like, it's not, it's not the, it's not the, it's not everything. Right. So, so yeah. I have the official Johnny's Johnny's right. Uh, per Adam Himmel's back. Uh, yeah. Sorry if I mispronounced your name, but per source, the Celtics sent the, Nick's the top 55 protected 2023 Hornets second round pick and deep breath. The worst of OKC Washington or the better of Miami Dallas. So okay. those are the so, two yeah. picks that the Knicks got back. I'm just happy. We all have an excuse in the 2022, 23 seasons root against Miami and Dallas. Not that we needed one, but it works. We have one. Yeah. Uh, so perfect. Yeah. Um, then the Knicks proceeded to resign Alec Burks. And then after that, Derek Rose and Taj Gibson. They also officially signed Dwayne Bacon, uh, Amir Sims, and MJ Walker. Are you a Dwayne Bacon guy, Jeremy? I'm a. I don't really give a shit about. <laughs> look, you know, you know me. You know, I don't you. care about end of bench players. It's not worth the argument to me. They're all going to get zero minutes per game anyway. So it do you really remember matter. the the pearl clutching, clutching over Michael Kidd Gilchrist? Last offseason? Yep, because I didn't care about Amari Spellman. It didn't have to be Michael Kidd Gilchrist replacing him. It could have been literally anyone with a body who, who knows how to play basketball. And <laughs> lo and behold, Spellman gets waived, and the Knicks don't have Michael Kidd Gilchrist. And it's totally fine by me because they, like, again, why are we wasting time on, on like, a 15th man? So, uh, but yes, I do remember that time. Also, uh, Iggy Brazdakis was still on the roster at that he point was. too. So uh, it's he funny was. just how, you know, 
these end of the, these end of bench guys are often interchangeable, well, except for Theo Pinson and. But you just unfortunate. I well, I listen. It's it's, it, it's not over yet. He could still sign the other two way. Um, look, you hit on what do you hit on? One out of every twenty of these guys. One out of I, I don't know what the the ratio is, but it, for the record, I like Dwayne Bacon and I like MJ Walker. Just just throwing yeah. it out there. Just anyway. Yeah. So um, Sims and Walker. One of them is you know assuming another player uh, with under four years of experience is not signed to a two-way, which is possible because the Knicks can bring up to 20 players and they have 19 19. uh, in training camp. Um, But by the CBA, one of the exhibit 10 players has to be converted to a two-way and uh, it can't be Dwayne Bacon because he has four years years of experience. experience. This would be his fifth season. So um, yeah, that's, that's kind of where we're at, but it was a fun week and now we can move on to Taj. So uh, Taj. the before and after, right? Before it was reported, Taj was going to earn a one-year minimum deal. Uh, it would have been the veterans minimum. So the way it's structured is that um, for any player that's kind of had more than two years of experience and um, and is signed, they can get paid more, but their cap hit stays at the two-year vet minimum amount, right? So for example, the two-year vet minimum amount is almost $1.7 million dollars. And Bataj would have been paid two point six four million dollars because of the fact that he's a ten plus year veteran, and that's how much he's able to earn. That was wait a point. minute. I'm sorry. Hold on. Why is the cap hit so low? I may have missed that. Because for uh, the cap hit is basically like any player that's uh, achieved more than I think two years of oh experience. It's okay. uh, so right. like you know the way it works is that a rookie starts at a year zero, then to one year two. So um, if you've had, you know, I guess in this case, what, three years of experience, technically, maybe two, whichever. That's a nifty little. It is, right. So that's how, you know, like okay. the Lakers, for example, yeah. their cap hit for someone like Carmel Anthony is $1.7 million. But with Todd, with, yeah. with, you know, the amount he's being paid, it's about 2.7. It's just that he's, well, it doesn't count towards their cap as, um, as a cap hit. For that extra million, what, whatever it is, it's, it's way way too little for for Taj, right. who now instead is getting a two year deal, which I believe, uh, yes, you have it written down yes. here. So it's non, uh, non guaranteed. So it's really a one year deal, right? It, well, potentially, it's two year deal, four point nine one million the first year. Uh, that's the cap hit and the payout. It's different from the vet minimum in terms of what I just described. And then the second year is uh, about five point two million dollars non guaranteed the second year. Um, so I mean. You know, he could be non-guaranteed. Contract could be guaranteed. We'll find out. But um, this is kind of what it looks like from a, a salary cap a salary cap perspective, right? So uh, on the left, you have a before section. Uh, and that was when everyone was re-signed except for Derek Rose, because Nick had his cap hold, gotcha. and Taj Gibson. Uh, and only like five people are really going to care <laughs> about this. But based on all the numbers reported, it's $120 off, which means that at least one of the contracts or, or multiple add up to being $120 off. That's it great. doesn't really matter. Like I, I'm not losing sleep over this because again, it's $120, but somewhere, you know, there's some sort of thing going on. I, it probably isn't an issue moving forward with how the salary cap, you know, like minimum and outgoing trades and whatnot. I just was like baffled at how the math was working and Based on what's reported, this is what it is. Two things. I'd love to think that someone working for some agency somewhere is walking around with six twenty dollars bills in their pocket. That is like, <laughs> it's like off the top. Uh, second, we, we should point out. Uh, maybe you're you're gonna get to this. Um, we've <laughs> we've talked about things that we we've talked about way more than they deserve. We keep mentioning Luca Valdoza. Is he going to get waived? Is he not going to get waived? Luca Valdoza did not get waived, and he didn't need to get waived to accommodate all of this. So I just yes. wanted to point that out. Uh, it turns out a lot of the contracts that were reported had unlikely bonuses. Yes. So uh, those bonuses then weren't basically, they weren't included in the contracts, which meant there was enough room to keep Valdoza without having to cut him to make room and then sign him with uh, the room exception, the room. as I had kind of thought about earlier. Um, so then on the after section, once Derek Rose is paid and once you have Taj Gibson paid as well, um, the Knicks are $8.36 million, uh, above the salary cap, which is fine. Uh, they're also hard capped because they took in Evan Fournier on a sign and trade. 
Um, the Celtics are not hard capped because of a sign and trade. It's only the Knicks because they a- acquired a free agent. Um, so all that means, again, for anybody who may have missed the previous episode, is the Knicks cannot spend they, – they cannot – their cap finagling cannot send their salary over the hard cap or the – sorry, the, the apron, which is – what is it this year? One, it's like 143. 143. It's, it's irrelevant because there's – I'm sure there's something the Knicks could do to get over 143. It's, it's basically impossible for the Knicks to get to that point. So the, yeah. it, it really doesn't matter. There's uh, 22 – about million dollars between where they're at now and where the hard cap is. They're not going to be hard capped. All right, excuse me. They're not going to hit the tax apron. They are hard capped. It doesn't really matter, but that's just kind of how the outlook is right now. Can um, I ask your opinion on something? Cause sure. there's something I've been thinking about as, as we're, so for anybody on YouTube, obviously we're looking at this for anybody who's listening on the power. We have all the numbers in front of us for what the Knicks are going to be. The different Knicks are going to be making this year. And boy, are these just a lot of, tradable salaries like these salaries just they don't ex- like a team might have one or two of them the knicks have like seven uh or eight like of, of like right in that sweet spot where you could finagle and, and compile stuff together if you again we're wagering another donut there's two donuts now if you had to wager on like and this is not answerable but i'm just going to pose it anyway who is the most tradable salary the knicks have and i'm purposely being vague most tradable salary. Um, Who do you think is the most likely salary to end up? That's the better way to ask it. The most likely salary to end up in a trade at some point between now and next summer. Uh, I'll say Alec Burks, honestly. Okay, interesting. Um, the reason I say that is, I mean, you could say New Orleans Noel because of Mitch, but then, you know, if Taj is non-guaranteed, who knows there? I, I guess the thing with Burks to me is that if the Knicks want to replace Burks, they can because they can use the mid-level exception next year. Uh, maybe if Quentin Grimes is taking some sort of step forward on the team, it's it's maybe not replicating what Alec Burks can do, well, it, but they feel like they can, they can get away with it, that sort mm-hmm. of thing. Um, they basically made Alec Burks' a salary, it's $1,000 more than what the uh, mid-level exception this year was. So I just think it's a really easy deal to move. You know, Derek Rose, you can move him pretty well, but again, I think it's, that's like more salary you would move in a, a bigger type of deal. I just yeah. think that with Alec Burks, it's um, it's a lot easier to make the the math work. And and a lot of teams always are looking for good bench scorers on the wing who can, you know, sometimes run the offense, but not great, but do enough where it's like, hey, yeah. we need him to get hot. He's a guy who can get hot. So I'll go with Burks. I think that's the right answer. I think there's an argument for Fournier because if we're talking, they're going to make a trade. We, we both hold the same opinion as to what the sort of trade is that they're going to make. And you, you need Fournier's salary. You don't need Burks yes. in there. You if need it's for a Fournier's star, salary. hundred yes. percent. You, you, yeah. you have to do Fournier included, yeah. which is otherwise shame, right? there's just too many players to, yeah. Right. That the math. And this is the other thing. I think when you're adding up salaries for some sort of player, a habit that a lot of fans have is like, Oh, I have these, Four salaries that yeah. add up for this one player doesn't work either. Fun. It, yeah, you, you <laughs> need to clear the the roster spots and other teams. It becomes more complicated. So uh, where the Knicks are set up, I feel like they're in a great spot. Well, um, but, but I w- I will say, and I wrote about this a little bit. I think at some point this week, I I do think it because of the nature of their salaries, not definitely, but it makes it more likely to me at least. Jeremy may disagree that a trade happens next summer like not in season but next summer because then at the the roster spot issue is not saying it's not an issue but it's it's less of an issue because you know teams are, are don't have as many players signed so that's my two cents i would agree and you know maybe the deadline but i think more likely is for the bigger fish is probably yeah. uh in free agency um so this is what now We have this year and also looking at what next year kind of looks like in terms of the salary. So Knicks project to enter the 2022-23 season over the cap, as we've discussed before, giving them the non-taxpayer mid-level exception and the biannual exception. And that's going to be over $10 million, right? The Uh, non-taxpayer mid-level. Correct. It should, or at least around $10 million. I mean, if the last one was, what, 9.5? So yeah, it'll probably be about 10. That's good money. It's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. 
so that's the other thing. And, and Mitchell Robinson's cap hold changed on Spotrack for what it's worth. They're saying is it's 190% of what he's earning this year for like, you know, more nerdy math. Doesn't really matter because again, the Knicks are going to be over the salary cap. Yeah. So his cap hold is kind of irrelevant. Um, but really it's just, I mean, what we're looking at 15 players here. 13 of them have uh, are, are basically signed next year. Yeah. One of them being Vildoza, which is non-guaranteed. So it's 12 guaranteed contracts, a non-guaranteed contract, Kevin Knox, Mitchell Robinson. And then of course the Knicks have their first round pick and their second round pick. And maybe they want Jericho Sims to, you know, sign. So all of a sudden moves need to be made. You have to consolidate some of these salaries and it works out because you want a bigger star. So it works out that way. I'm I'm just thinking out loud here. I uh, we haven't talked about it, but a few more names will come off the board uh, for next summer. Uh, Marcus Smart's no longer available. Terry Rozier's no longer available. I forget anybody. Those are the those are the big guys, right? Uh, um, yeah, those are the yeah. two biggest ones. Um, one one more, Joel Embiid. Oh yeah, well, well, he wasn't not next summer, but he's he off the board going I, forward. So I'm, I'm just saying, next summer's free agent, unrestricted free agent market, unrestricted free agent market, has a chance to be not only the worst in NBA history, but like again, I, I'm putting Levine and Bill aside, but like after those guys, it has a chance to be like monumentally, really, very, quite bad. I just wonder. Um, I, I would I would struggle to foresee a scenario where the Knicks had Mitchell Robinson on the team without signing into an extension for the entire year because I just have to like somebody's going to be sitting there with money and going to want to go back to their owner and be like, hey, look at this thing that we got. Look at this, you know. I don't know if you agree or disagree, Jeremy, but that's just like, I'm just thinking about this now and as I'm hearing you talk. No, I agree. I mean, as I've said, it's the sort of thing where I feel like you have the deadline. You hope to extend Mitch. If not, you can't extend him during the regular season. You can. You cannot. You can. The deadline. So, that's the deadline. But I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's, the, we'll, we'll get clarification on, from, you know, later on. But I, I am of the belief that you can't extend him past that point that is the deadline because okay. he will be a pending free agent yeah i because of the nature of his contract is again it's not a first round pick extension it's a just right. a regular contract i was under the impression that they could they could extend him into the season but maybe uh, we'll, we'll, i thought he couldn't but at this point i've kind of like now spin zone myself to the point where <laughs> we'll i'm really not sure so we'll, we'll, we'll get, get clarification, clarification on that um we'll get, we'll get clarification on that yes but, um, but that's this is the other thing to think about as well is the Knicks have not been incredibly risk. Uh, I should say this. They, they don't take risks. They don't take risks. That's, no. Thank you. So it's the sort of thing where if you're looking at the next summer and there's a risk that Mitchell Robinson could walk for nothing, is that a risk that they're willing to take? Nope. Everything we've seen, it doesn't really feel like it. No. Um, so that's that's why we'll keep an eye on something. But um, yeah, that's what worth, it looks like. Worth keeping an eye on. Um, yeah, and again, the the best free agents are probably T.J. Warren, um, Aaron Joe Gordon, Ingles, baby. You don't, love, you don't like Aaron Gordon? Yeah, I, I do. I mean, not for this team though. That is Schroeder. Come on. Okay, enough's enough. Um, but yeah, <laughs> Nurkic, so, Val, Valanciunas. It's just getting progressively worse. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, well, well, uh, but that, that's what it looks like. Again, yes. I'm happy the Knicks spent. They'd be in a very miserable position. If they didn't, and um, it would just be really, it would be very detrimental moving forward. Um, so with Taj, use it or lose it. This is something that Bobby Mark said in his video, and he's absolutely right. Uh, basically, the Knicks had the opportunity to use their room exception or not. They had 14 guaranteed contracts and Vildoza, if assuming Vildoza is staying, and I'm including Taj as one of those 14. Um, if we have a full roster of 15 players and the room exception is going unused, might as well just use it. Give it to Taj. There's no problem. Um, and, and just to, for clarification's sake, Jer, you're, you're not saying that like the room exception goes away. Per, like they could, for anybody wondering, I know there's somebody out there listening, wondering this. Yes, they could have signed Frank Milikina to the room exception if, if they wanted to. But 
look at the roster, look at the presumed rotation, look at all this stuff. Like they're, they're stocked. Like there's no more, like it, it makes sense to give the money to the guy that's here and that's going to play and that's a valued, right? Is that, am I? Yeah. And I mean, again, like it's prorated as well. So as the season goes on, it just kind of decreases, but Taj yeah. gave up more money to stay. Yeah. So the next, and that's been felt, reported. Though. Yeah. Right. Um, so, you know, it, it made sense for them to do that. But again, if you look at the free agent list just for this year, who would the Knicks be giving it to? Right. It's like, okay. No. It's going to be Wes Matthews, J.J. Redick. Um, Surprise Redick hasn't signed yet, by the way, just for what it's worth. Yeah, again, I still think he wants to stay close to home, and he's waiting for a team like Brooklyn where injuries pile up maybe, and he signs on on the bench. But who knows? I, I, I would bet agree. you he, he goes into the season unsigned. I bet you he's waiting yeah. for an injury. That You nailed it. That's a good call. Yeah. Um, um, so, yeah, Taj got this nice little $2.2, $2.3 million bump in pay. Um and then there's the tinfoil hat in me, which uh, I just the saw fact it. that uh, Taj's agent is Mark Bartlestein. And, uh, you know, I mean, the Knicks have, have paid for Bartlestein's pool. They've probably paid for the sauna, the basketball court at his house. <laughs> I mean, think about how much money they, they gave they to his clients. Court? Oh, 100 percent. I mean, I, I would Bocce. if I were rich enough, I would put a bocce court in my home. I, I, I love bocce. I'm good I mean. at it. It's great. It's fun. Love good, it. But good yes. Sport. Um, Again, like, I mean, he got paid. Taj got paid $8 million. Ellington got paid $8 million. Um, I think, wasn't he, wasn't Marcus Morris with Bartleson? Bartleson before oh, he might, left? I, I forget. Yeah, that sounds right. So, I mean, he got an absurd amount. But then the tinfoil hat that I'm talking about is <clears throat> who else, John? I just, uh, one of Bartleson's many clients. Uh, I know. Any idea who that player might be and, and, and what his status might be as a, uh, uh, is, does he have a team next year? Is he signed anywhere? I, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, you're going to be on an island with this one. That's fine. I'm just saying it doesn't hurt. I but- j- no, it doesn't. I just, I, I don't, I don't see it happening. But I hope, I hope I'm wrong. I, I, I very much like this player. So, players Bradley Beal, basically. Bradley, what I'm saying. Um, he's pretty good. Bradley Beal's pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah. So again, it, look, it can mean nothing. It could just be doing Taj a favor and, and Hey, Bartlestein benefits from it, but it's also like, you know, I mean, I think every little bit counts. And when you're trying to recruit guys, if you have an agent being like, Hey, pushing this team to the side and saying, look at what they're doing. They're, they're building. They've been great. They treat everyone. Well, I can speak on their behalf. I think that says something. So that's why I think it's just, it's an interesting side note, not, not the reason obviously, but it, you know, it's, I don't think it's a, a mere coincidence that this happened with this client of that agent. I man, it's too early to be having these fucking conversations. Um, well, we already have. I mean, I've talked about Beal like no, I, eighty thousand times. So. I know. I I'm just I'm thinking ahead. You know, if the Knicks are good this year, and I think they'll be good, and we're we're not going to do our season preview right now or like win predictions or anything like that. But I think the Knicks are going to be good. Um, it's going to be. Hmm. There is no like there is a cap space market. There are teams that are going to have cap space unless I'm forgetting someone. None of those teams are, are teams that anybody is going to like a Zach Levine or Bradley Beal is going to want to play for. Jeremy, am I forgetting so, off the top of your head? Am I forgetting anybody in terms of the cap space teams? No, like li- like likely like, oh, yeah, that's an obvious destination for one of the two. Uh, uh, not counting Chicago and Washington because, you know, maybe they want to stay. So it's just it's and that's the thing. Boston resign market smart. Boston has not kind of cash space. So like the, the Beal destination that, that, that goes away, that vanishes. So whoever, if those guys are walking, they're walking in a sign and trade. And not that that's going to be a problem. I mean, the, the, those, the teams aren't going to have a choice. I mean, it's, it's the NBA in 2021. How you doing? Um, it's just, Oh man, it's going to be interesting. It's good. It's, it's going to be really interesting. And I, if you, Again, we're wagering our third donut. Three donuts is a lot for one hour. Um, if you had to wager a donut on at the trade deadline this year, zero, one, or both of those guys, there's a, I'm not going to say gets moved because who the hell knows, but like their teams really 
really, really explore the market, like a, in a Lowry way this past year, what would your what would your wager be? It would be one, and it would be the Bulls. Sorry, it would be the Wizards. It would be the Wizards reveal. reveal. The reason being, I think that the Bulls are all in on this core, and they've Boy, sucked to too much into this for them to even give the idea of Zach Levine leaving. Yeah. Um, and I think they could be like, hey, you know, if you leave, look at the market, you're not going to go to a bad team, which means it has to be a sign and trade. And we're willing to give you a huge max contract. So that's what we think. Can you imagine yeah. if they if they trade? <laughs> it, would, it, would, <laughs> it would be <laughs> so, a fucking disaster. Yes. But at least with the Wizards, it's a different situation, right? Because if they stumble, it could be, well, yeah. what do we really have? It's like yeah. Spencer Dinwiddie and Davis Bertans and several young players. So, and that, that's why I said earlier in terms of maybe, yes, the off season is probably the favorite, but I mean, at the trade deadline, if it's the sort of thing where they're opening up shop and the Knicks feel like this is their window, because if Beal were traded to another team that he probably resigns there. So let's try to make a deal. And then someone else comes along where you still have the ammo left over because I don't think Beal at the deadline would cost that much. Well, it would certainly be more than what you'd get for a sign and trade. Um, but it wouldn't be, you know, this exorbitant amount because you're basically <sighs> looking at it like, hey, it's hopefully 30 games of this player. He resigns and boy, would great, that market be fascinating. Oh would. my God. You're because you're, he's not at that point, he can't give a team an assurance. It, there's, right. I mean, he could tell them I'm going to like, and I, I guess the team could take his word for it, but shit. Oh boy. Yeah. Which is why, again, it, the deadline could be more of a fascinating I, time, assuming it all depends on a team like the wizards. If they say like, we're, we're done. We, we recognize the writings on the wall, let's I, get more, but how, how willing are they going to be about doing that? How willing uh, is Beal going to be about leaving? Uh, it's all fascinating stuff. I think I'd bet on zero. I, I, if I had to bet on, I I'd bet on zero. I don't, I don't, I think the wizards will be good enough. I liked in as the, uh, as I've noted many times, I like Dinwiddie. I think he's a good player. I, I like what they did this offseason. I think they're going to be decent enough. Um, maybe they'd be better than decent. Um, it, it wouldn't shock me. I just think there's so many good teams or teams that got better in the yeah. East that good. it's like, you know, are, are the Wizards getting a top six seed? I don't see it. Yeah. So are we talking about like a play-in game? They'll if be in the running for a play I know, but how exciting is that? Where it's like, hey, pretty much one of the better iterations of our teams is probably going to be we are back where we were last year. I mean, the difference with the Knicks, where if the Knicks are back where they are next year, it's that the Knicks overachieved with, you know, crap backcourt talent, especially yeah, no, at the point guard spot. Well, so they got one in better. Particular. Right. That's so we'll see. But um, I, I want to talk about Miles Turner just because oh, it has been raised. Goodness. Um, can we leave this behind? I would like to. I really would. But I just... I, I had to mention it so we can then leave it behind. But okay. the whole idea of if this, if Taj counts as more salary for Miles Turner, uh, maybe, maybe it does. But the point is the Knicks have more to work with at least. So the way it works with Miles Turner, uh, and then I, again, I hope we don't discuss him for quite a while, is that for any outgoing salary that's a little bit more than six point five million to nineteen point six million, it's the outgoing salary plus five million dollars for matching. So in this case, since Turner has a cap hit of $18 million, uh, the Knicks basically have to send out at least $13 million, right? Because 13 million, yep. add the five, 18 million, the math works there. So, you know, if you had Gibson beforehand, it wouldn't have worked, but now it does. And I showed Obi as an Not example. For now it has to wait until after December 15th. Right, of course. Yeah. But again, this is Taj, excuse me, uh, Turner won't be traded before the season anyway to the Knicks because of, as we've talked about how the math would shake up unless it were something like this, like Obi Knox and Vildoza that works. That's like one of the only iterations that, um, that really has that ability it, to match. It, it, it works if you want me to shoot myself in the face. Right. I, right. And again, I, I think Obi should be available in the right deal. This just isn't the right. This deal. is not the right deal. Right. And then again, Taj swap out Obi and put Taj in there. That works instead. Um, so there are moves that can be made. It was just a question of if that were the idea for the Knicks. Like if they were trying to sign Taj as a way to move him, you could include him in something like this and it would work out that way. But I, I, I don't see it necessarily happening that way. I don't, I don't see it either. I, I will say this. I, something that I was 
dead wrong. To, man, I'm, I'm opening the show with I was dead wrong about something. I'm closing the show. With, I was dead wrong about something. Um, I was dead wrong. I thought Kevin Knox would be moved this offseason. I'm, I'm really surprised he's still here. And I wonder, again, similar to the Mitch question, what do you think it is? I wonder if it's more, oh, wow, this organization still has belief that he could be something. Uh, maybe they took Calipari's, uh, you know, it, it's going to take three years um, as, you know, a little bit more serious. Or did they try to perhaps do something involving him and teams were like, yeah, I don't know that we're in a rush to pay Kevin Knox uh, $5 million next or whatever it's going to be next year. So, uh, yeah. Well, let's know. let's look at the two other taste, uh, uh, test cases or case studies, right? I mean, Dennis Smith Jr., <laughs> like it was Dennis Smith Jr. in a second round pick and that's what got yeah. Derek Rose. Uh, Frank Nielkina is unsigned. Dennis Smith Jr. is unsigned. It's just the entire Steve Mills era is just so Are we? polluted that I think it's, it's leaving a stench and there's no time and ability for Knox to crack the rotation. So again, I still maintain, I think eventually he'll wind up in a place like Oklahoma city where they can get to the cap floor and he won't help them win games and they can yeah. tank away in peace. Cause Knox certainly isn't going to help them win too many games. Uh, but until then, yeah, it's, I, I almost leave, I feel bad that he's kind of going to be stapled to the bench I would like to see him go elsewhere just so he can try to I'm not, continue his career. I'm not. It's just, look, we always presume health, right? We always presume everybody, all these conversations we have, it's oh, who's going to be in the rotation. Oh, how dare this person not, not going to be in the rotation. Nobody stays healthy. One Nick played 72 games last year. It was RJ Barrett. And he was one of like 20 guys in the league to do that. Guys are going to get hurt. It's going to be really interesting next year. Well, if, one of name your guy Fournier, RJ, uh, quickly Burks, any of those guys, um, he, shit, Obi, Julius, any of those, any of those six guys, if they get hurt, which way Tibbs goes? Um, cause it might be Knox, might be Grimes, might maybe it's Dwayne Bacon to bring it home, bring it home the bacon after all. Um, I don't know. I'm not if he's here, I, I think maybe he's here for a reason, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. So to bring it on home uh, again, will Taj be moved? Maybe, maybe not. I'd probably wager that he isn't, but I don't think so. having a second year is non-guaranteed. I think that's worth noting for salary filler reasons. Sure. Um, I think primarily he's just, it's just a favor to a great locker room presence who can serve as an assistant coach and also play. And he's insurance, you know, if another big man is moved or even if a big man gets hurt, someone like Mitch is traded or injured. Taj can fill in admirably. Noel can fill in too. May not be as good as, you know, come playoff time, but you can hold down the fort with those guys. Um, so that's, that's really kind of where we're at with Taj. Um, but I'm just glad he's back and I'm glad he's making more money. Cause I, there was no reason for him not to. He is a great Nick, great human being. If anybody out there listening to this, this is my plea. Ready for this, Andrew? This should be the promo. If anybody out there knows Tosh Gibson or knows someone who knows Tosh Gibson, I just, if you could convey the message that, that Tosh Gibson is my favorite Nick, I, the, ho the host of a Knicks podcast, their favorite Nick is Tosh Gibson. Get that message to him. That's all I want. You don't have to ask him for it. I just want him to know that he's my favorite Nick. That's all. You got that, Andrew? I got it. I the thing is, you have it, Andrew. I got it officially, Jeremy. Do you have it though? Do you, do you get it? I I could you say I it again? I don't appreciate this, by the way. <laughs> don't appreciate this. Here's the problem, Jeremy. The person I would ask to convey that message would be John, the yeah. guy with access to post game media zooms. What would Taj do if he was on a post game next year? And I was like, Hey, Taj, uh, John Macker, Nick's from school. Uh, I just yeah. want you to know, you're my favorite Nick. You're the best. Brilliant idea. Thinking? Hold on. This is the thousand patron reward officially. If you oh, if we get to a thousand patrons, John will do that. I fuck. <laughs> Come on. Well, at that when point, John loses access to asking questions at the Knicks. Um, we've got a thousand that. patrons at that point. I don't care. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. When the Knicks, um, <laughs> this is embarrassing. When the Knicks put out the their hype, they put out a hype video. Was last at some point last week, whatever. And the the first quote in the hype video was Taj talking about whatever stuff. I was like, 
fuck. I think I asked him the question that got him yep. to say that. <laughs> I, literally t- I literally turned to Rosina and was like, you know, John asked him that question that prompted this response. So I went back the- in my because I because I'm doing them now on here. So I have to record the, the voice stuff in my on my little app. Of, what is this voice memos? So I went back and listened to the voice memo from from that. And I was like, shit, I did ask him that question. I was, I was very happy. There you go. A lot. We've accomplished a lot over the last year. And as, as this being the end of the basketball year, we can reflect. I also just speaking of Patreon, uh, shout out. To, we did another live watch for our Ewing tier. Vivek is in the chat. The soup, not the super regular chat. The regular, it's, not- it's, it's super because it's the Ewing tier. Yes. Mm-hmm. So Vivek, shout out to you and anybody else that tuned in um, and that gets to watch it on replay. Shout out to you. And then anybody that wants to watch a little pre-show banter, a little post-show banter and wants to join us post-show, you can through our Ewing tier. But um, yeah, I'm I'm a Taj Gibson stan a, a little bit, you know. So if you're not a Taj Gibson stan, something's wrong with you. I agree. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. I agree. Um, okay. Uh, Andrew, any, any anything else from you? That's it for me. Um, a fun. Are we not saying what's happening the next two weeks? Are, are we? I can cut this out. The only the people in. No, nah, leave it. In. Leave it um, in. Only no, the people I'm, in I'm not, until we're here. I'm not. I'm not going to be on. Uh, I'm not going to be. So, man, this is what episode are we up to? I think this is 380. The next five shows, John will not be. This is 380. All right. Shit. My goodness. So um, I have appeared on every one of 380 episodes of this podcast. Um, I will. Unless am I recording the intro for Wednesday? No. Okay. Um, I will not be on 381, 382, I guess 383, 384, 385. That's fine. Yes. Yes. That's that's five. (laughs) Um, so Andrew and Jeremy will be in my place um, doing a much better job than I do. Um, and uh, I will I will reveal. Surely why I'm not on. It's it's a good it's a good thing. I'm just I got. Got got a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you're busy. And in the meantime, Jeremy and I will talk about nothing but Nick's over the next couple of weeks, which will be kind of fun. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. All right. Got some really cool guests lined up. You know? That we, th- yeah, that's the thing. Don't, don't. I mean, no offense against Andrew. Cover your ears, guys. No offense against these guys. You're gonna oh. want to tune in for the guests. That's oh, okay. I was like, what am I covering my ears for? It's <laughs> <laughs> like no offense to Andrew. I was like, well, wait a minute. And also, like, I, you have to edit the podcast, right? So like, like, I will know gonna, who's on the. You have to listen to it. it. I also right. helped book a couple. Of <laughs> <laughs> oh man, John, Jer- seriously, best of like we know, and yes. so. Well, you know, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Yes. Uh, Jeremy, uh, fantastic job as always. Anything else from you before we get out of here? Uh, no, that's it. I'm just, I'm looking forward to the next two weeks. I mean, I'm always looking forward to Sunday pods, but this, uh, this feels different, you know? It feels a little different. Um, yeah, this is a little different. Um, all right. And everybody out there, uh, I hope you're um, enjoying your summer. I hope everybody's, uh, I was going to say, Everybody's staying safe with the hurricane. As I look out my window, it looks like a glorious day. Did this thing happen? I, so how I won't get too nerdy on you because I actually did track it because we were in New England when this thing was supposed to hit us. So it pushed east. So it went further toward the coast and it's going to hit Boston as a tropical storm. Oh. So it's been down. Right, well, to be honest, it was only ever a cat one anyway, which is like like a Wednesday in Florida. So it was never actually going to be that bad. We're just less prepared for it because we're on the East coast, uh, all Northeast where these don't hit us as normally. I, cause like this, I was like eight 30 or something. And I was told my, I was in the mood for a bagel this morning. So I like the Laura, I'm going to get a bagel. She's like, no, I don't know if you should be driving right now. She's yeah. like, she, she didn't want to let me get in the car. Yeah. I was like, I, I think I can make it. They where you just were the Hamptons. My buddy works there in Bridgehampton and okay. uh, his, his entire strip, the strip mall is closed because they were like, nobody is. A, it's a full evacuation. Oh, out wow. east, so. okay. Well, listen, if anybody out there is getting hit by this thing at any point in time, um, make sure you. Uh, oh, look at this. Got what some happened? great news. My wife just texted me both children sleeping. Is that a booty call? I was about to say, get to work on that. That girl, dad, number three. Do we listen? That was a joke. <laughs> that was a joke. Yeah, but you said it. <laughs> I would. Happy anniversary, John. <laughs> there will be no more Macri children. Uh, 
No comment. <laughs> that is um, my contribution to that conversation. If anybody out there listening has more than two children, God bless you. God bless you because that is that is yeoman's work. I don't know how you do it. Um, because two, man, I can't wait for I can't wait for the two of you to have one. One, just one. Well, listen, I as I've said, I've got my hands full with the one, my plant baby. Oh, it's a lot of work. I water him once a month, and the stress that I have, it's just a lot. You know, what if it, if I don't water him? If I don't feed my son, I mean, forget it. He's right, you know, the living thing. You, it is. This is the last thing. You know, my not yet five year old daughter told me earlier today. I she I saw I went upstairs. She had her door closed. And I heard the blow dryer going inside. So I opened the door and she's blow drying her doll's hair because I guess she had wet the hair. And I said, oh, hey, you all right? She's like, yes, I'm good. I'm like, all right. Do you want me to close the door? Because it was it was I was trying to be considerate. She's like, yes. All the way, please. Oh, oh, it started. Yeah. <laughs> We're there. My my baby is the next film school podcast. So there thankfully, thankfully, it never needs me to close the door. Thank goodness for that. OK, uh, I hope you've enjoyed everybody out there. This uh, lovely banter to end the show and uh, our final final for real, for real, for real final cap or no cap. Um, thanks. Obviously, uh, Jeremy, you, you're amazing. Uh, Andrew, what can I say? And uh, most of all, thank you out there. All of our listeners. Uh for making this uh, what was a really great season. Got some really fun summer content uh, over the next couple of weeks. And then before you know, we'll be back at training camp. So um, hope everybody's well out there and we will uh, talk to you soon. Peace out.